Close your eyes and take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. Notice where you feel the breathing in the body and focus your attention there and then try to stay there. All the way through the in breath, all the way through the out, all the way, all the way through the spaces in between. And ask yourself what kind of breathing is comfortable. If long breathing feels good, keep it up. If not, you can change. Try shorter breathing, more shallow, heavier, lighter, faster, slower. It's as if you're making a home for the mind right here. As if you want home to be comfortable, otherwise you're not going to be staying at home, you're going to be running outside. And why do you want to stay here? Because the mind, mind needs a place to rest. And it rests best not when it's sleeping, but when it's alert, mindful, and awake. But can it stay still with one object? Because that way you're developing good qualities in the mind at the same time you're resting. In fact, that's what the Pali word for meditation means, bhavana, means to develop. You're trying to develop mindfulness, the ability to keep something in mind. Alertness, watching what you're doing while you do it, and seeing what results you're getting. And then ardency, you want to do this well. If you see that you're not getting good results, what do you need to change? Pay attention right here, take an interest right here, because this is not only a good place to rest, but it's where the work needs to be done. Our life is shaped by our intentions, and intentions happen where? They happen here in the present moment. Your past intentions, you can't go back and change them. Your future intentions, you're not responsible for them yet. You're responsible for the ones right here, right now. Yet all too often we glance away. We are in the present moment for a bit, and then all of a sudden we bounced off to the past, and then we bounced off to the future. We can't really penetrate into what's going right here, right, going on right here, right now, because there are many levels to our intentions. And if you want to understand them, if you don't want to be fooled by an intention, you have to be able to see it clearly. So that we get the mind still, so it can watch what will come up, telling you that you'd like to do this, you'd like to do that, and then you're going to ask questions. Do you really want to do that? If it's going to be skillful, okay, you can go ahead. If it's going to cause any harm, you say no. This way you develop good qualities in the mind, and it leads to your happiness. This is one of the reasons why meditation is listed as one of the forms of merit. Bunya is the Pali term. Merit is not the best translation. It might better be translated as goodness. But it's the happiness that comes with goodness. When you do something you know hasn't harmed anybody at all. You can be generous, you can observe the precepts, you can meditate, develop good qualities in the mind so that you're more likely to act on skillful intentions, which will be good for you and for the people around you. And when there's a sense of well-being that comes from that, you're living in this world, you're not imposing any burdens on anybody. You're actually helpful when you can be. That lifts the mind. That feeling of being lifted, that's what the word punya refers to, punya or goodness, that kind of goodness. And you can dedicate it to others. Anybody you've harmed, anybody you've loved, and often, not too often those go together. But anybody you want to dedicate it to has passed away, you can dedicate the merit. And it's good to have the kind of merit that's complete, generosity, virtue, and meditation, so that your gift to the people you're dedicating it to will be complete as well. All you have to do and think in your mind is, may they rejoice in the merit that I've made. And it reminds you, too, that merit is something that's worth rejoicing in. This goodness that you're doing here is worth rejoicing in. Because we see so much in the news about people doing things that are really unskillful. Nobody's pro broadcasting the news of the skillful things that we've done. So it's up to us to appreciate that, because appreciating the goodness we've done helps give us more energy to do, it, do more goodness on into the future. So may you rejoice, may other beings rejoice in your merit and your goodness. And that's the way more goodness gets propagated in the world.